Good morning and welcome to the service with the difference. It is the 31st of July 2022 and this week we come to the end of our journey through Paul's letter to the people of Colossia as he addresses the Colossian heresy where they are trying to connect um, all other faiths, all other religions, all other beliefs, all other superstitions with our worship of Christ. And he is saying you can't do that. Um, that's an empty faith. A living faith is a faith in which you root yourself in Christ and you live yourself into, into Christ. Um, today we are reading from Psalm 126, a psalm that, that reminds us God, God does great things. He, he releases from the hold that sin has over us and he draws us back to him, into his presence, back to himself. We're also reading from 1 John chapter 2 from verse 28 all the way to chapter 3 verse 10. Um, Paul speaks of how we are children of God, and so we should love as, as God loves. And then we're going to be reading from Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 17, as Paul speaks to them, and he says to them, a living faith looks like this. This is what it looks like when you are living into your faith, when you are rooted in Christ. And again, I'm going to ask that you put this on, on pause as you read through those readings. And as we read through them, we give God thanks for them, and we pray that he will bless them to us. In, in this moment. Speaking for myself, um, I like to wear clothes that I'm, I'm comfortable in and so I will keep t-shirts or pants or socks or even underpants for long after they've got holes in them. Um, even, even when I get new clothes it takes me a while to wean myself out of the old clothes and, and into the new clothes. You know and then the first opportunity I get I'm back in, in the old clothes um, even if they are stained and damaged that I'm in them because they, they are comfortable. Um, and, and that's true until the new clothes eventually become the old clothes. As Paul is speaking to the people of Colossia, he, he is inviting them to, to clothe themselves with Christ. He says, try on these, these new clothes, these Christ clothes for, for a while before you, before you take them off and put the old clothes back on. Because if you try them for, for long enough, you will find that they are actually a whole lot more comfortable than, than the old clothes. Um, because while the, the old clothes take your fit, you, you're more comfortable in the new clothes because you were created to fit into those clothes. And so the old clothes take, take the shape of your evil desires, but, but the new clothes, the, the Christ clothes, they, they help you to fit into your God-given form. The new clothes are the image of God, and, and you were created in the image of God, and so it is the best fit that, that you'll ever have. It's the most comfortable fit you will ever have. And so, so he says to them, you, you were made to fit into these clothes. Your, your life, he says, the language that he uses, he says your life, is is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And as those who have accepted Christ's invitation to be in communion with God, you know, we, we've given ourselves over to, to God because we have realized that our life is better with God than it is with ourselves. And and so our life is, is kept in God. We give our lives to God. Our life is hidden in Him, says Paul. Um, he keeps it safe. In our frailty, in our fear, in our anxiety, Christ hides us in himself. You know, he, he gives us the courage to face the shadows. He, he gives us the courage to face the future by, by reminding us that we have chosen to let him help us through the shadows because we no longer live in our own strength, but we live in his strength. We, we no longer live for our own purpose, but we, we, we live for, for his purpose. And so Christ gives us the strength to, to let go of our old clothes and to wear the clothes that we were made to fit. Um, stop convincing yourself, says Paul. Stop convincing yourself that the things that hold you back from embracing the fullness of God are too great for you to overcome because because that in itself stops you from, from doing it. If you keep thinking about how comfortable your old life was, if you keep thinking about how comfortable the old clothes are, at, at some point you are going to be putting them back on, even, even if it is in secret. But even then, um, the consequences are, are not in secret. You know, your drinking, um, your addiction to pornography, your, your gambling, um, the way you gossip, the bitterness that you hang on to, your your pride, um, and Paul speaks about anger and rage and malice and slander and, and filthy language and lies. 
all of that affects everybody around you and, and it destroys the sanctity of community. You might think that you are doing it in secret, but the effects of it destroy trust. The effects of it destroy the sanctity of, of creation, the sacredness of creation. And it, and it is that serious. Don't think that my gossip is small. Your gossip can, can destroy an entire church. Don't think that my addiction to this or that drug is, is tiny and nobody not, will notice because it affects your family. It affects the community. It affects everybody around you. If you've said, I've given my life to, to God, in other words, my life is, is hidden in Christ, but you continue to drag your life through the mud, then, then obviously you, you haven't really given your life to God. But you've told the world that you have. And so you make a mockery of God because the world sees a God who cannot keep your life safe. When, when the truth is that, that you don't actually have the courage to leave your life in, in God's keeping. In God, your life is like a seed that has been planted. To you, to you, it was dead, but to, to God, it holds the potential of perfection. To God, it holds within it the full force that called creation into being. You have died to sin with Christ and you have been raised to new life with Christ. Your life has always had the potential, but it's only in Christ that, that you will ever realize that potential. In God, the perfect conditions exist for the seed of your life to germinate. In God, the perfect conditions exist for the seed of your life to, to grow, to become something beautiful, to become something exponentially more than, than it is. And, and you, were, you were created precisely for, for this. That's why it is able to grow into its potential. And, and this is significant, especially in those moments when you don't feel the closeness of God. This is significant, especially in those moments when you have forgotten your experience of God or or when you have minimized your experience or, or when others have convinced you that your experience is nothing. Your life has the potential of perfection and it has always had that potential, but it's only in Christ that you will ever realize that potential. You have given your life to Christ and so and so you have died to the ways of this world. But have you? You've given your life to Christ, and so your life is hidden in God. But is it? And I guess this is a part of the mystery of, of, of God. The, the work is already fully completed, but it is still not yet completed. Christ has done the work that enables us to, to die to this world. He, he has extended the invitation to us, and, and he has paid for, for a new set of clothes. But, but we choose to use it or, or not to use it. And, and should we choose to, to accept the invitation that the deal is done? We have died to the world because we no longer answer to the rules that govern this world, just like Christ doesn't answer to the rules that govern this world. And, and again, we, we go back to Easter, um, the death and the resurrection of Christ. Christ died according to the rules that govern this world, but, but he couldn't stay dead. He, he was raised from the dead because he doesn't operate according to the rules that, that govern this world. He only, he only submits to the rules of his kingdom. Death, death can't keep him. Um, the rules that, that govern this world state that death is the end. But Christ's resurrection says that God begs to differ and, and death can't be the end. Life is as eternal as the creator of life is eternal. And so death is simply the means by which we are reborn into the fullness of, of God's presence. In the same way you die to the womb and are born to this world, so you die to this world and are born into the fullness of the presence of God. And so, and so Paul says to them, remember that, that your life is hidden in Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ. And so you need to clothe yourself, he says, with the things of Christ. Clothe yourselves with the things of Christ. Last week we spoke about how baptism in water is a symbol of baptism in the spirit when we when we are baptized in in the water in in the community either as an infant or an adult it makes no difference because it is a symbol it it is a it is a symbol of the moment of conversion the moment that we know we we are loved by by god and and so in the service itself um, we 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 make certain bars that are just a verbalization of our experience at conversion at that moment where we, we know we're loved by God, our response to God is, and I love you back. And so I will love you by doing whatever you're doing. 
I love you by putting everything off that is not you. I love you. I love you. And so I, I want to repent of my sin because I see how it separated me from you. And I want to turn from anything that will separate me from you. I want to take off my old self. And I want to put on my new self. I want to, I want to trust you as my Lord and Savior. And I want to live into my faith. I want to live a a, a faith that, that brings life and, and is a part of what you are doing. And so I want to be a part of whatever you are doing in the church and in the world. And I want to, and I want to serve with you and I want to serve you in the church and in the world. And so I want to put on this new self. I want to put on who, who you have made me. And both actions are vital. You, you put off the old self and you have to put on, on the new self. You, you can't put new clothes on top of old clothes because a new a new suit on top of old clothes just makes the new clothes look look bad um you you can't be greedy and be kind because then you're only being kind to satisfy your greed you know you're only going to be kind to to benefit yourself not to benefit others and and that's a lie and and also you can't just take off the old clothes and not put on the new clothes because then you're simply going to be left naked and and when you're naked and you're exposed you're very quickly going to put on on the old clothes again and so you have to take off the old self and and put on the new self you have to let go of what was and embrace what you can be embrace um the potential that god sees in you i don't know if you've ever seen those movies where there is somebody who who cleans up nice you know there's a, a rough guy that that dresses smartly um shaves and cleans up nice and and it takes a while for them to to realize the potential that another person sees in them. They, they realize the potential in themselves that the other person has seen all along. And so as you put on the new clothes, or as you clothe yourself with Christ, um, after you have taken off the old clothes, um, after you have taken off your old self, your, your new self is renewed and you are reminded within your heart, you are reminded within your soul, you are reminded within your mind, within your, within your strength that you have been created in the image of God. And God's image is not that of a Jew. God's image is not that of a Greek or of a male or of a female or of an old man or of a young girl. God's image is found in the one who has accepted God's invitation to be in an intimate relationship. And, and that relationship is expressed naturally in a growing sense of compassion, a growing sense of kindness, of humility, of gentleness, of patience, of tolerance, of forgiveness. And, and when, when these are all bound together, that's, that's the color of, of love. And so Paul says to them, the clothes that fit you the best are the clothes that you were made for, rather than those clothes that you have forced to fit you. We fit God. God doesn't fit us. We spend so much energy trying to work out which way of life suits us best when all of the time we, we are just losing out on living because we, we fail to be what God has called us to be. Stop, stop being somebody you are not. Start being who you are in Christ because, because that is who you are. Don't, don't excuse bad behavior by, by saying, but this is who I am. I drink, but this is who I am. I gossip because this is who I am. Um, I do this or I do that because, well, that's just who I am. It's actually not who you are at all in Christ. None of that exists. In Christ, love exists. And, and, and you know this because in the silence of your hearts, when you, when you stand still long enough to hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts you of that. And so, and so this morning, I, just, I want you to accept Christ's invitation to come to him. Accept Christ's invitation to, to let him help you take off the old and put on the new. Accept Christ's invitation to hide your life in him and to clothe yourself with him. Let's pray. Lord God, you, you are the creator of all good things. You, you even formed us to, to fit into your image. And so even as we praise you for the way in which you are constantly at work in this world, we we beg of you, Lord God, that you would, you, would, you would help us to leave our old selves behind and, and clothe ourselves with you, that you would, you would hide us in you and that you would help us to live in your strength and according to your purpose, Lord God. Help us, help us to turn from everything that is evil. Help us to repent of our sin. Help us to embrace you 
as our Lord, as our Savior. Help us to be a part, Lord God, of all that you are doing in both the church and in the world. And this is our prayer, Lord God, as we pray it in your precious name. Amen.